Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on today's show, we're gonna be talking to Megan Klug. Megan is a family portrait photographer, so she shoots families and kids, and she does things on location and in her studio. And her studio is pretty amazing, and that's where we caught up with Megan, and she walked us through everything that she built in her garage. Well, here we are with Megan. Megan, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come into your studio today. Yep. Well, um, I really want to talk about, we're going to talk about the studio in a little bit because okay. it's this phenomenal space. This actually used to be a garage. Is that correct? Yes, our second garage. So this was a garage. Mm -hmm. You had cars and motorcycles and stuff like that in here. Mm -hmm. And now look at this. This is awesome. Um, but before we do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about what makes you different than a lot of photographers that I know. Um, and that is you have this very specific workflow and philosophy about dealing with clients. And that comes through with even the name of your business, Rosemary and Me. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us uh, how that name came into being and how that impacts how you deal with clients that walk through your door? Yeah, definitely. Um, my mother's name is Rosemary. That's why I chose the name. Um, unfortunately, I wanted it to be Rosemary's Cottage, but after taking a class from Sarah Petty, she said you can absolutely not I'm name not your studio that or your business because it just doesn't feel like what your work is. And so together her and I came up with Rosemary and Me, which basically for me symbolizes the relationships that I'm trying to capture on film between families, mothers and children. And so I named it Rosemary and Me with the philosophy behind it that I'm going to treat my clients the way my mother treated me. And your mother is Rosemary. <clears throat> my mother's Rosemary mm -hmm. and she, when I go home to visit in Washington State, always leaves chocolates on my pillow and fresh flowers in my bedroom. So for me, I always have fresh flowers in the studio. Sometimes I bring them to shoots as a prop and my clients get cupcakes at the end of their session. I've had those cupcakes, they're really delicious. Yeah. So the, the thing that's interesting is there is like no stone unturned as far as the detail that you put into mm -hmm. when somebody walks through the door of your, your house is your studio, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so when somebody comes in, it's the smells, it's the appearance, it's the yeah. office that you work from, everything is immaculate. Beautiful, um, yeah. And so why do you do that? <clears throat> Well, I feel like when people come to meet with me, I like try to meet with them before we even have the session. They're going to come in my studio. They're going to come in my office. They're going to come in my home and they're going to know that the effort that I put into this is going to translate to what I'm going to do for them. I'm going to make everything beautiful. I'm going to treat them special from start to finish and I'm going to love them so much that they'll feel guilty going anywhere else. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. And so you, you do these photo <clears throat> sessions with kids and families, mm -hmm. um, moms, and all, you know, it's, it's a very family oriented business. Yes. Once they're finished, they come back here mm -hmm. and you even have a very special place for them to look at the shots that you took. Is that right? Right. When I was designing the studio, I wanted it to very much all be workable space that looked pretty. Everything's functional in here, and I wanted this part of the studio to be where I photographed mainly, and the front part of the studio to be a really cozy sitting area that I could do a projection slideshow for them so that they could see their images on a big screen and sit there and fall in love with everything in a really beautiful environment. And the way I set it up is I did a, <clears throat> I did a old mantle, and so they can see what an 8 by 10 is going to look like on the mantle and what a 20 by 24 is going to look like on the mantle. That is awesome. Okay, we're going to see that in a second. Okay. Um, before we get there, let's talk a little bit about how you shoot. Okay. So you're a Canon 5D Mark II shooter, is mm -hmm. that correct? Yep. And you've got this big old lens here. And I probably use this 90% of the time. This is my main lens. I love it. And, and so that's interesting. Um, it's also the lens I use. I use the 70 to 200 constantly when I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. um, this is a small studio. So how are you able to do that in this studio? Is that, uh, is, it's able to work here? Yeah, I was lucky enough that my garage was a long garage and not a wide garage. And so I sometimes have to be all the way at the entrance and sometimes I'm up on a ladder a lot. So mm -hmm. that's how so I make it work. Out. And do you have other lenses that you use as well? I do. I have my 24 to 105. I don't mm -hmm. use this a ton. I still just am in love with what this does for me. And then I also have a macro lens that I do use sometimes, but exclusively 
pretty much this is my main lens. The main lens. Mm -hmm. And this is the IS version, so Absolutely. you've got some stuff. Mm -hmm. And you shoot not only in the studio, but out on mm -hmm. location and in pumpkin patches and old trucks and things like Everything. that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, how do you yeah. find those locations? Um, I'm always looking while I'm driving and I have no problem stopping and knocking on doors of strangers and talking to them and I'm really good to the people who let me photograph on their property. They get cupcakes. I, they get cupcakes, I bring them flowers, I will do a session for them. Whatever I can do to get what I want, I, I will do that. You'll do it. Yeah. Okay, I believe it. Now, yeah. um, also, the Texas School had a pretty large impact on your Huge. photography. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what the Texas School is and how that impacted how you shoot. Well, first, when I was taking your class, you recommended going to Sandy Putch, and so mm -hmm. I started taking her classes when she came to Phoenix, and then at one of her classes, I said, can you give me anything else where I can learn? And she said, you've got to go to Texas School. So that's how Texas came about. Um, I've been there two years. I'll be going again this year, and they have phenomenal instructors. It's in a small classroom. You're with them all week, and they have such a wide range of classes. I just fell in love with the And they helped you organize and not only your name, but how you mm -hmm. shoot in, in a lot of the stuff that you do here in the studio as well. Right. Um, the first course I took from them was branding yourself and your boutique studio. And so I had already built the studio, but it wasn't completed in how I decorated it. I ended up changing my name when I went to Texas school. Um, I took from Vicki Toffer and Sarah Petty, and they were huge on teaching you how to love your clients, um, make everything from start to finish your brand. So when someone sees your card, your packaging, everything, they know that it's you. And so I came away with a huge knowledge of how to brand myself. And you love people regardless of photography. Oh yeah. So it's not something that you had to sort of muster up and no. you just, that's the way you are. Okay, let's go and take a closer look at the studio okay. and we'll start uh, with these barn doors here that you actually made. And so uh, we're gonna move the camera around a little bit and then okay. we're gonna get started with this. Great. All right, well, this is actually a very, very small studio, so we're gonna have to do this tour in sections, even though, uh, you know, we could walk around here, but our camera and lights won't make we it. Break so, a sweat. No. Yes, so you have to just put this together in your mind as best as possible. Let's start right here with these doors. These are real barn doors or are they fake? No, they're just barn doors or just doors that I picked up at a, you know, place that they take stuff from homes that they don't want anymore and I and you knew. textured them and stuck <clears throat> stuff over them and yeah I, the paneling on them was good so I knew that we could make them look like barn doors I have a friend who's very talented and if I can think it she can make it so I, it. I got to scrub the, the wood uh -huh. and, and but her and I did it she together did. so we crackled it and we took this hardware and buried it in the sand and put salt on it and let it get all rusty and that's crazy got barn doors out of it so a lot of the stuff in here you actually manufactured basically yourself almost everything almost everything me with with help from family and friends that's crazy yeah. did you manufacture these probably not no. these are actually let's talk about this so you have two pro photo these are the compacts right um they're, i think there's 600 or 300 mm -hmm. something like that and then you have a Photoflex Octabox, mm -hmm. and then you're also using a light dome, which is a large um, soft box. And you shoot just two lights? Just two lights. I really don't have a lot of room in here. I usually keep this one up and bounce off my ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I bring it down, but I started with a larger box and it just was too, too much big. in here. So I switched and just have these two. And this ceiling intentionally <laughs> is white for bouncing light? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then you have this guy right here. Tell me how okay. to pronounce it because I'm from Montana. Shays Lounge. Shays Lounge. Shays Lounge. Lounge. Okay, and what do you shoot on this? Um, I like to get up on my ladder and put it over here and photograph down. This is great for a, a really small family with maybe one or two children or just mm -hmm. a child. And I get a little bit of this clock and a little bit of the brick and together it looks really, really cute. And so each of these like benches and things that you have around there are actually like little sets. So you yes. move from set to set to mm -hmm. set. And so there's probably what, 10 or 12 different areas in this small space? Probably, pretty much everything in here is pretty so that I can photograph with yeah. it. Even mm -hmm. if it overlaps. Then over here, this is one of your uh, wraps, your gallery wraps here. Uh -huh. um, I'm gonna pick this up. Sure. And this was shot right here. On that couch with that, that backdrop. Couch. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And where do you print? I love White House. I use White them House? exclusively. Yeah, these are very, very nice. It's a canvas wrap. I'll stick that back there. Um, and so we have that. And then over here, um, we're going to actually have to move the camera so we can keep going around. But okay. we'll do this, this wall right here, and we'll go through each of these little vignettes and the then brick. come back. The and, oh, the brick. Yes, we want to do the brick over here. So over here, we have brick. 
And this is uh, faux brick, is that correct? No, it's real brick. Real brick. Real brick, uh-huh. Wow, and so uh, how is that done? My husband. <laughs> Your husband just stuck My around. husband did that um, with the help from another friend, and then we um, took what molding we already had on our door and just made it look old and stained it and crackled it, and then that's the existing door that and was you just here. You people inside this door? <clears throat> I love putting people right here. It's mm -hmm. great. Cute doorknob. That's another And how do you spot. light? Just the Octobox? Um, I, I bounce off the ceiling, and I usually light from over here, and then I photograph from that way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, let's move our camera, and then we'll keep going around the studio. Okay. All right, so we've moved our camera. Here is actually the softbox we couldn't see before, and this is our PhotoFlex uh, photo medium. Uh -huh. Actually, it's a large, yeah, a large softbox. I had the so extra large. I switched to the large. Gigantic. Too big. All right, so now we have another um, little place to shoot. So we have this long mirror here. This is mostly pretty, but for clients to check their makeup. Mm -hmm. These boxes I use for storage, and I also use them for props. Okay, and then you also have a lot of wraps and things in the mm -hmm. studio. Um, how do you choose which ones to show? Um, this is one of my most favorite shots I've ever taken. We actually made the clothes, the flowers for this session. I think the girls have beautiful eyes, so I wanted to showcase their session here. And also it was really important for me when deciding what to put in the studio, not to over clutter it with my work, but to show what I want to sell. I want to sell gallery wraps. I want to sell float wraps. I don't have any prints in here. Right. I sell a lot of prints, but I didn't want to showcase prints and frames. So So this is a marketing strategy. Absolutely. So And these are great. They're actually just Velcroed on. Wow. So I can switch out my float wraps and put something different on anytime I want. This is for clients to hang their clothing on. I love to keep what I want people to wear to their sessions mm -hmm. on hand. So when they come and meet with me about their session and say, what do we wear? I say, put your girls in something like this. Cute aprons. You're welcome to use mine. Right. Everything. So it's everything has a purpose. Absolutely. It looks good, but it has a purpose. And it's uh -huh. wear this and then buy this yes. when you're done. Yes. And how cool is that with the Velcro? Mm -hmm. That's neat. Okay, let's keep going this way. Okay. Um, we have a couple other things. We have this music stand here. Again, a great display for some of the stuff that you're selling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to kick your microphone cable down here. Thank you. Um, this is what you were telling us about earlier mm -hmm. that we have actually, you can show people what their wraps are going to look like displayed. on the mantle. Right, mm -hmm. displayed. Um, and this also has a secret. It's uh, this part right here. So can right. you show us what this does? Right. Well, this is basically, you know, an old mantle. Mm -hmm. um, the friend that helped me build the studio, I said, can you please build me an addition to it that we can put my screen in? So she built this other section. I've got my cute tagline mm -hmm. that's kind of my quote. And then all I have to do when people come for a session, have them sit down on the couch, relax. I drop down the screen. We watch a great slideshow so of cool. their session. And then they fall in love and they know that an eight by 10 is not gonna do their mm -hmm. photograph justice and they're gonna wanna go with something this size. So this is so. cool because you get sort of the visual of here is the projected mm -hmm. thing I want you to buy over right. this mock-up of what right. you're going to... This is something that a lot of people have in their homes or something similar to showcase, uh -huh. you know, their family portraits. And so that's what I use. And so far, it's been great. That is awesome. So um, we'll have the camera go really high here for a second. And you can see that we have all this black cloth in the ceiling here. Right. Um, now, I know on the other side of the studio, you had a white ceiling so you could bounce. So why mm -hmm. did you put all this black above this section? My garage door is still up there. And so <laughs> this obviously, is a garage. <laughs> this is a garage. Um, if it ever had to be a garage again, we wanted to have the door still. So I asked my friend if she could make a fake billowed fabric ceiling for me. And I think it took her maybe two hours and she just busted this mm -hmm. out. And we hung it on rods. It's all hung on rods. And it just makes us feel like a cozy sitting yeah. room. It's hard to believe this is actually a garage. Yeah. And so, yeah, I peeked back there. There is a garage door up on here on rails. And then all over here, this is also where the garage door used to be. Right. And you just enclosed that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, behind these curtains, can we have a peek? We can see sure. that there's just the external window um, with a bunch of gear out there. And mm -hmm. then you also have these shades here that you can pull down. Right. Um, and you put these in here. For what reason? I realized that, you know, it was important to me to be able to shoot natural light right in this space and make everything look neat. But when I went to do my first slideshow, I was like, uh-oh. It's too bright. It's too bright. So I had my husband put these in, and so far they've worked great. And then 
you know, these of course are to hide the brackets for where the garage door comes down, but I also keep a lot of rolls of fabrics and different backdrops back here and my ladder sometimes. So everything hides something and looks pretty. Okay. Okay, we have one more thing to look at, and that's the other side of the studio. So let's move our cameras. Don't, don't forget we'll... the treats, Mark. Oh, the treats. Yeah, treats. tell me about the treats. Cause... Treats. It's important what kind of treats you have. Smarties. Smarties make a noise I learned from Sandy Putch, so I can bribe my kids and do this. That I'm getting your treats. I'm getting your treats. These don't make marks on their mouths or tongues. And then at the end, they get a sucker, which they love. So the treats are here, and I use them all the time. Like Pavlov's dogs. Yeah. It's awesome. Mmm. Cool. Okay. All right, the treats are a big deal. I would have never thought about it. I'm going to start using those for models. Okay. I got your treats. <laughs> That's awesome. They okay. won't eat them. They want no, to they won't. Okay, so let's look at the other side of the studio okay. really fast and see how you made your projector and make it all look beautiful. So okay. let's move our camera and keep going. Okay, now we're on the other side of the studio and we saw the screen earlier and this is how you've enclosed your video projector. So mm -hmm. uh, how did you build this? Did you find this? No, my friend Donna, who helped me build the studio, took the dimensions of the projector and built this nice box and put some work on the sides to make it look good. We put some holes in it so it has ventilation, and that's how I do my projections. And it's very awesome. And I noticed you have these uh, portraits here. Remember those? I do. So <laughs> actually, Megan was part of my Beyond the Basics workshop, and this is one of your assignments. Yes. And I haven't seen these all blown up, so they're amazing. Uh, well, thank you so much for letting us see your Welcome. space and understand how you work. And uh, remember, it's Rosemary and me, and you can see all kinds of neat stuff and see how you work. Thanks again. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Well, that was a lot of fun hanging out with Megan, and these cupcakes are very tasty. You know, you can see more of Megan's work at rosemaryandme.com, or just visit the Adorama Learning Center for some of her pictures and more tips and techniques on photography. Well, remember, if you have somebody that you'd like to see interviewed on how they do that, please send me your suggestion to askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.